Good Monday morning, everybody out there in YouTube land. It is your buddy Chop It On coming at you with a grand edition of Chop Talk this Monday morning. We're going to dive into NFL, NBA, and NHL all at the same time. We're going to quickly skim everything, look at the slates today, and we're also going to target some research and where we should go. So let's kind of jump in. But before we do that, run down to the comments section, click like and click subscribe, ring the little notification bell, and tee yourself up to get all of the latest content that I might be dropping if you like this kind of production or this kind of uh, not production, it's not professional production, but this kind of uh, content release to kind of get you pointed in the right direction today and tell you where you're going to find the data that you're looking to find. Um, one of the areas that I dive into when I look at football for week 10 is very, very simple. I look at the Vegas lines, and some of them are already out for week 10. So if we kind of cruise down the list, we look Thursday night first, and I see 50 points, you know, seven point spread, not it might not be a bad game to take a couple of pieces from. This might not be one of those all-out Thursday fades. There may be a piece or two inside there. Uh, last few weeks, we've had the Thursday fade really easily. Run down here to Monday night, and it looks like kind of a crappy game. So this is kind of the reverse, where we've been getting bad games up front and then good games on the la on the back end and been able to do some damage across those slates. This one is a little bit different in that the back end is kind of going to be a dud. We need to see a total come out on this game. We need to see a total come out on this game. But looking up and down the list right now, I would be centered in here on some of the passing games. I mean, based on what Carolina gave to Tampa Bay last week, it, it, that defense isn't as stout as maybe we thought it was or I thought it was. Low total, big spread. That tells me key on the Jets. Of course, the Jets' defense will be in play against Buffalo. Tells me that there might be some running backs. There might be you know, a pass catcher or so in here. I don't really think we're going to wind up there, but initial glance tells me I need to at least look at it. Uh, Cleveland, Atlanta, 51 point total, close spread, three and a half potential shootout. That is if you're not already numb to all of the 50 point game totals that we get these days in this uh, two hand touch flag football NFL league that we've been getting where scores have just gone absolutely through the roof. Cleveland, Atlanta, possible shootout, both sides of the game probably in play. I might lean more towards the home team, although we saw what Matt Ryan can do. Obviously, Julio Jones in play in GPPs and whatnot. Uh, if De if uh, Devonta Freeman probably is not back, if he's not back, then you're looking more at Tevin Coleman, Edo Smith again. They want to keep that thing as a timeshare, but Tevin Coleman had himself a day. Uh, Cleveland, Chubbs in play. Probably, Jarvis Landry has been a value the past few weeks, but I mean a tremendous value for what he can do. But Cleveland's just not using him the way that he was used in Miami. It's And it's partly Baker Mayfield not being able to get the ball to him. And, of course, not having outside weapons that really balance that offense out either. And then, of course, Cleveland, no offense to you Browns fans, but the franchise is just year in and year out of train wreck. And they just can't seem to ever get it on track. They can have all the talent in the world. They'll still seem to screw it up somehow. Uh, New Orleans, Cincinnati, definite shootout, close spread, high total at 55. Home team favored. I'm not a big fan of Drew Brees outdoor on the road. I don't know if I would go Ingram or Kamara in this. Kamara was pretty obvious in the shootout against the Rams. I don't know if he's as obvious now, but the Cleveland or the Cincinnati side will definitely be in play. These are, again, things we're going to look at as the week unfolds and points us in these directions. Uh, Tampa Bay, Washington, interesting, a 51-point pick -em. Tampa Bay, we know, has the worst secondary in the world. What's Alex Smith even going to do with it, though? You know, I mean, is he going to keep checking the ball down? We didn't see Jordan Reed. We didn't, we didn't see him use any pass-catching backs necessarily. I, I just I don't understand that guy for the life of me. He's, you know, more conservative than the religious right on the political spectrum. He's, he's more conservative than an accountant with a stick up his ass. I mean, I, I just, not to offend all of you professions out there, just trying to make light of the situation. Very, very, very conservative. And it drives me absolutely bonkers. I don't know what he can do with that matchup, whether it's Fitzpatrick or Winston or who. Tampa Bay might be in play being the home team again and a non-division game. Division games we have to watch because they know each other really, really well. This one, obviously not a division game. New England, Tennessee, seven-point favorite here. We know Tennessee's turnover prone probably puts New England's defense in play. Miami, Green Bay, same diff. 
uh, Green Bay should have some weapons available in this one back up at home. But you got to watch these South teams traveling north. There's always a big deal with Tampa Bay when they would go into Green Bay, the Battle of the Bays. They'd always talk about sub-40 degree temperatures. We're getting to the time of year where it gets cooler up north, and it's very warm down south. So that that change in temperature sometimes throws those teams off. I think it gives Green Bay a decided advantage. And I think that your Devontae Adams, MVS, uh, maybe Jimmy Graham's coming back to life. We need to see where the weaknesses are in the Miami offense. Uh, Indianapolis, Jacksonville, probably going to ignore that game. Detroit, Chicago, uh, Chicago defense will probably be in play. Don't know what Detroit's going to be able to handle with the Chicago defense. 18 and a half points. Jeez, a loop. I mean, holy crap on a cracker. 18 and a half. That is damn near 20 point favorite. If we break that, oh, that, is, that ain't even right. Because 50 points split in half is 25. Uh, half of that is 9. So 25 minus 9 is 16 points. Arizona's theoretically supposed to score. Kansas City defense absolutely in play. They play better at home anyway. Probably your lock defense of the week outside of whoever's going up against Buffalo. Dear Lord, Kareem Hunt Day. It might not even be a Kareem Hunt Day in GPPs. It might be a Spencer Ware Day. I mean, why would you even run the guy out there? I mean, Mahomes seems to get it done all the time, but what are you going to do with a 20-point favor? I mean, first of all, they're going to score 20 points just to even cover this spread. Oh, my land. That, that's just, this is just nuts. Um, minus 10. Mm, probably a Chargers type of game. Melvin Gordon might be in play here. Don't like running backs on the road, typically. Seattle and L.A., this is another girly day. Another big spread. Rams defense is going to be in play. Some of their other weapons, not as much. Not like in the high score shootout like in New Orleans. This big spread puts them on, what, a 26 minus 6, about a 20-point total for Seattle, and about a 30, about a 30 total for the Rams. So that's four touchdowns to go around. You probably figure Gurley for two. Wow. Philly, a late night game. Don't know that I want too much of that one. Certainly won't want much of this. Might not be a Thursday through through Monday slate. Might be more of a Sunday main slate this week. But anyway, that's a first quick glance at NFL. If we jump in to NBA, one of the articles while I wait for our research station to pop up, which actually it is, um, it's interesting. Maybe I'll call that one up for you here really, really quick. You need to see this tool. If you don't know this tool, you need to take a look at this thing. This thing's awesome. So we'll let that bad boy load up. We'll talk a little bit about what I wanted to show you in these games. I was looking at point totals. When the research station is not available for you, you can go to any free site, whether it you know, be Roto-Grinders or wherever. Look for the top few teams in points implied. So Oklahoma City, Golden State, New Orleans. Focus on those offenses today. Okay? If you really want to get crazy, click points per game. Look at Oklahoma City, 109. Scheduled to score 121 tonight. They're pointed up over 10 points. I mean, that, that's a big, big indicator that on average, they're they're priced as if they're going to score 109 points a game. But tonight, they're supposed to score 120. That's 10 more points to go around. Somebody's going to get the lion's share, share of those. You might think Russell Westbrook, but it might be somebody else. And ultimately... Ultimately, that means that they're priced a little bit lower than they maybe should be. The prices don't adjust quite that fast, especially on FanDuel. So there may be some bargains in the Oklahoma City offense tonight. Golden State, New Orleans, your other offenses to watch. You might want to avoid some of these down here. This is just very basic DFS 101. It's not mind-blowing stuff. It's just pointing out where your focus might go. When we look at the pace, we're going to look at the who's paced up. That's going to do the same thing. It's going to tell us who should get more possessions, who should get more fantasy points. And, I mean, not much. Four possessions per game doesn't mean that all of a sudden some dude scheduled to score 18 points is going to score 30 for you. It just means that these guys are in a little better, a little more advantageous situation to do well. And that tells us that they may be priced a little bit underneath what they might do today. That's what that's really telling us. So Oklahoma City, New York, and Minnesota, or New Orleans and Minnesota, uh, shocker, Minnesota is not on this one because they don't have a point total, I guess, in this game. But they are paced up. Uh, and this is the three teams. I mean, I kind of tend to stick with the blue. The green doesn't do much. I do try to avoid the red some because, again, like on the opposite side of that, that tells us that they may be priced a little bit high. You know, they're priced on an average of five possessions more than they're going to get tonight in Houston, which means like a James Harden all of a sudden gets five less possessions to do damage. And that tells me 
that James Harden might be priced a smidge high tonight. And so if I have the money left over towards the end of my build, I may go to a James Harden. But if not, I'm not going to reach for him. I'm not going to just force him into my lineup because he might have a night where he struggles to hit value a little bit. He certainly might have a night where it's going to make it hard for him to dramatically exceed value and possibly be in the GPP winning lineup tonight. Those are the indicators that we're looking at that kind of steer us in certain directions when we start to, at the very beginning of the day, start to dissect a slate. Looking at the matchup sheets, you can obviously see who the softer matchups are. You can also scroll down here, and you can just go in the point guards, sort by, you know, basically DVP. And look, Russell Westbrook, huge usage, good matchup. We also know pointed up big time tonight, right? And, of course, paced up. So it's a smash spot for Russell Westbrook. You know, it doesn't, you don't need rocket science to tell you that. Maybe you're fading because of his price, but it's a smash spot for him. We look at the DVP matchups, and we look at usage here. Ol Oladipo and Fournier. Fournier's been hot lately. I'd keep using him. Cleveland tends to struggle against the shooting guards. They allow a lot of points to him. So Fournier's in a great spot. He's also not too expensive. Oh, I'm sorry, Oladipo's been smashing lately. I'd keep using him. That's, a, that's where I was really looking at first. But Fournier's fine. He's in a great spot. Probably in one of the better spots on the night. Small forward, same diff. Diff, death, whatever. Same diff. 29, 27% uh, usage in Paul George coming off of, you know, a good matchup. I'd key on him. I wouldn't even be afraid to come down here to Josh Richardson or Gallinari. You know? This is, again, first look type stuff. Looking down here, good matchup. A little bit of usage in Miritich. That's going to depend a lot on uh, Anthony Davis, most likely. Jamari Parker, Tobias Harris. Come all the way down here to a middling to maybe slightly favorable matchup. And big usage in Blake Griffin. You might key on Blake Griffin tonight. Looking at the center spot. Big matchups. I'd have to come down here probably to get excited about Vucevic. And then, of course, you got your bench players. So that's another way to quickly break down where I might go. And I write these take notes. When I look at the NHL stuff, I'm going into their state, their skater stats. Last four weeks, I want about a 10-game sample size. I'm coming down here, fantasy points. I'm sorting by fantasy points. And I want to look at every single skater on the league. If I go into the filters, I can open up. I can target certain offenses if I want. And this is, what, again, while we're waiting for our own research tool to come out, over at DFSArmy.com, which honestly is where you should go to get the coaching and the explanation for all this stuff. I know the league. I know I know the, the industry. I know the places to go to make your research most efficient, and I know the most cost-effective ways to do that. I sit inside DFSArmy.com because we also provide the coaching. We also provide the knowledge. We also provide the feedback. When you're curious about a matchup or you're curious about how to use a certain tool, how to allocate your bankroll, how to choose certain contests to your player style, that's where we tighten down the ship and we put, we keep you pointed in the right direction, keep you on course, and tur <clears throat> oftentimes turn unprofitable players into profitable players. I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. you know. And as a result, if you made it this far through the video, which I appreciate, I want you to follow my pinned tweets this month. Because my pinned tweets, when they get retweeted, if you follow me and you get, you know, help me retweet these articles and spread the word, I'm going to give away a free month to DFS Army to those that are retweeting these tweets. Okay? Helps me spread the love. Helps me help you. Pretty simple. It's a win-win situation. So DFSArmy.com. Jump in there. Become a VIP. You can click these links. Become a VIP very, very easily. Retweet my articles, and I'll enter you. The ones that are saying retweet this one are the ones that I'm going to come and track, and I will enter you guys into a, into a sweepstakes drawing, and the winner will get a free subscription for the month, for what, month of December, I guess, to DFSArmy.com. We got all three sports, we got all the sports rolling right now, including MMA, NASCAR, all that stuff. So when I'm looking at hockey, I go down here, and I'm looking for points. Again, who's producing? Who's producing? I can already tell you that in the NHL tonight, your key games, your key offenses on that five-game slate are going to be Boston, Pittsburgh, and Washington. Those are the offenses that are scheduled to score the most. Okay, Boston's at home, Pittsburgh's at home, and where's Washington? Washington's at home. Hey, that's even better. Yeah, that doesn't mean the others won't do anything because it is a contrarian sport. It is 
a volatile sport, which is why it leads to contrarian behavior. But those are the offenses that theoretically, if we ran the slate 100 times, would come out on top most. I want to see within those offenses, I want to see out-of-priced guys, out, you know, mismatched priced guys. So I'm looking up here at the top at the 8,000s, 9,000s. That's fine. They're producing. They should be producing. If I've got the money left over, I'll certainly take some of these guys. But the first ones I'm looking for are the value plays. Rattle off if he plays. Value play. 20 points. Basically the same production as Alexander Ovechkin over the last five games rattle has been on the ice. Seriously. Why would you pay $2,500 more for Ovechkin? Now, if you're targeting a line stack or targeting something, of course, it's what you would do. But if you're looking for a pure value play, something to start building your lineup around, you might take a rattle off first. You might take a Palmieri. Only a point underneath Ovechkin. But a point and a half underneath of Vanny Malkin. You know? It's not again. It's not rocket science. A little bit out of price. A little bit out of place. Anders Lee. If you believe that New York Islanders are in a good spot tonight against the Habs, Anders Lee might start your roster builds. There's not a lot of cheap, cheap, cheap value up top. Chris Letang on defense. That's pricey for a defender. But in the overall scheme of things, you get 16 points per game for 6,200. If you can find the value on the wings, you might take the offensive exposure to Crosby and Malkin through Letang. You come down here a little bit, you're looking at John Carlson. There's your exposure to Ovi. If you wanted to go double up on the defenders and Latang and Carlson, you're not in a horrible position. You're not in a horrible spot. You get double high priced defenders, which is going to make you unique in an industry that tends to pay down. It's a GPP winning type of proposition. It just has to pan out for you is all. Come down a little bit more. There's a low one. Tutter. 13 points for 4.8K. Hard to argue. Another value play, Vatanen. McAvoy. Alex Chase on 3,600 on right wing Edmonton. Probably scoring either on the you know top one or two lines. Hopefully getting some kind of power play exposure. If I game log him, we'll find out why. Look at these goals. Three goals here, three goals here. Back to back to back games. Boom, boom, boom. Shooting the puck, four, three, two. Shooting the puck a little bit, but putting the biscuit in the basket. 18 points last three games, 16 points. That's what you're after. That kind of hot streak production for that kind of price, where's that 3,600 right there? That's another value play. These are the type, maybe you throw him in Palmieri or him and Radulov or something in, and then you start building around your stacks because you've got your pricing locked up. Scroll down a little bit lower here. Sometimes you can find, you know, Niskin, and you can find your defenders down here. Carlson's a little bit expensive, Niskin in $2,000 less. Niskin in producing, what, double-digit points in a couple of games? What, four of his last seven? Not terrible. 20-point ceiling, three times tested it in the last seven games. So this is another way to start your building for NHL. You want to look at the goalies, you want to look at the other stuff, but you want to wait for our research station to come up at uh, DFSArmy.com. The research tool that I told you about, Inside the DFS Army is a VIP-only tool. It has all of our projections, all the stats. Scroll over to the right, and it shows everything that you could possibly ever want to see when it comes to basketball from Vegas line, pace of play, cash consistency type stuff, right? But what we're using is this and one catch-all metric. This thing is a beautiful metric. This and one metric is showing it's taking into account things like home and away, road splits, uh, minutes, fantasy points per minute, all sorts of things, and it's putting different weights on them. And it has done a very, very good job at identifying very, very solid plays, especially FanDuel punt plays. If I organize this out to where I'm top to bottom here, 25 points for Russ. I told you Russ, Russ was in a smash spot. A 25 rating, I should say, on the and one system. And the next closest guy is 19 points rounded. And that's Blake Griffin, who I also told you was in a good spot. Again, it's not rocket science. You focus on these guys. You build around these guys. Now we've got a couple of sources telling us they're in outstanding positions tonight. Paul George was in a good spot, too. James Harden is not in the 20 range like he usually is. He's bumped down a little bit. Why? Because they're probably paced down and pointed down. Therefore, James Harden's maybe going to struggle tonight. Now, could he pop off for 80? Sure. Throw him in a GPP lineup? Sure. It just means that the frequency at which he's going to test that ceiling is lower tonight. It doesn't mean he can't hit his ceiling. It doesn't mean he won't hit his floor. It means the frequency, the, the risk of bust goes a little bit higher. The risk of testing his ceiling, in Russell Westbrook's case, goes higher. Blake Griffin's case goes higher. That's why we would rather key on those guys. It's what everybody in the industry is going to do. It's a chalky build, and that's fine. 
generally speaking, we want to win your another tip for you. You want to win your GPPs. You build around a chalk core. You build around a steady foundation. They're the best of the best for a reason, because they're the best. Three, four, five, six even guys in your lineup that are rather chalky, rather fundamentally sound, ra you know, in rather good spots today. And you lock that core up. And then you maybe take one or two, maybe three pieces that didn't quite make that list. That might be a James Hart. Instead of Vucevic, which is one of the top centers on the board, you might take Drummond tonight. You might take Cat you know, towns. You might do a little bit of that to kind of get a little bit off the beaten path. You might study some ownership or go to a place that has ownership ratings. GFS Army has them inside the domination station. And you might look for some of those little bit lower owned guys that didn't quite make your count your, your core list, your core build. So you've got a solid core of two thirds or so of your lineup and then the other third or quarter of your lineup's a little bit funky. That's how you win, because on the nights when the core does what it's supposed to do, and then a couple of key pieces fail that you're using leverage across the industry on, bang. You you fade Russ Westbrook, you put James Harden in there, ba-boom. Russ has an off night somehow, and James Harden has a great night, and the chalk was on Russ, and nobody was on James Harden, bing. Now you're in. You've got the same core as those other guys, they just didn't fade Russ, and you did. It's that simple. We use this to create our and one list, which is our player pool in a lot of cases. If I take the, the point guards, I've sorted by descending. I take the point guards. And now I've come down to, I'm going to write these top five guys down on a piece of paper. Russell Westbrook, Kyle Lowry, Steph Curry, Chris Paul, Kyrie Irving. And this is going to change throughout the day as numbers update, as news breaks, as shoot-arounds happen. This changes, in some cases, dramatically. This is why our VIPs have the advantage. We get the late information. We get the late education from our coaching staff that tells us, okay, um, AD was scratched. Where are the pivots? Chris Paul is not going to go tonight. Where are the pivots? Those types of news breakers within the last, say, 20 minutes to lock, you can't possibly get and process yourself out on Twitter. You need somebody who knows the stuff, who is just telling you at that point, okay, this is where we were going today, but here's where we're going now. That's why you find our helmets on top of the leaderboards. If you want to win and you want to continue uh, growing and progressing inside this game and learning how to get better, you need our help. You need to be a VIP in here. You need to go into that comment section and click the link. You just do. So these are the top five guys at uh, point guard, at shooting guard. Oh, I'll mention something else here with the processing. Um, 17 points is a little bit weaker position tonight, but Depot's in there. Fournier's up towards the top. Told you. They're easy to spot. Schroeder, Levine, 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 whatever. Drew Holiday, there you go. One thing you're going to look for is, guys, the, the price cap difference here. This is the cap differential. It takes the DK salary versus their cap and the FanDuel salary versus their cap and takes the difference. And the, the difference is, you know, in this case, is 3%. In, on, when we're using the FanDuel side of this, it means he's 3% cheaper, according to the cap on FanDuel, than he is on DraftKings, which means he's been priced up on DraftKings, which either means FanDuel is slow to the party or means DraftKings really likes the matchup tonight. Either way, it's a tie-breaking number. Uh, you want to run some Magruder? He's cheaper on FanDuel than he is on DraftKings. He's probably priced up over on DraftKings for a matchup. That tells me I need to focus on him over on FanDuel. But I'm going to write those five guys down over on small forward side. I'm going to write these guys down. If I don't see the N.A., I don't pay attention to. But Paul George, Miritich, Gallinari, Kawhi Leonard, Kevin Durant, boom. Gallinari might be a focal point being one of the top match spots, one of the top identified and one ratings for tonight and cheap. You know, I also look at these numbers here. Who is, you know, how deep is the position? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight double digits, you know, as opposed to point guard, which has how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then a few in the nines. Shooting guard. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So about the same, a few more. We'll get to some short ones. Power forward. One, two, three, four, five. So five. A little bit shorter position tonight at power forward. Might tend to pay up there, although there's a couple of good guys in here mid-priced. So again, it's going to depend 
on where you go. But as a general rule, always look when the position gets a little scarce, look to pay up because the difference between the top guys and the bottom guys is that great. It's so big, you almost need to take the top guys. There's Blake Griffin, shocker. Priced way down on FanDuel. There's your value play of the night, perhaps. Especially for cash games. But Anthony Davis, if he plays, Tobias Harris, Aaron Gordon, Jeremy Grant, Thaddeus Young. I don't know that I'd go down to Millsap or Ibaka without better word from our coaching. You know, Tosh Gibson's going to make a value punt type of spot. Jeremy Grant is in a better spot, apparently. But Tosh Gibson's cheaper, too. A little bit priced up on FanDuel. See that red, that point two? It's priced a little higher on FanDuel than DraftKings. You might use him over on DraftKings. Same with Grant. But anyway, moving on into the centers. Booch, top on the list. Not a, not a surprise. We pegged him on the first look article over at Roto Grinders. Drummond, the pivot. Carl Anthony Towns, the pivot. Jokic, Adams, these are your top five centers. Gobert, Tristan Thompson. Tristan Thompson, if you trust him at this cheap price. The other way we're going to do, we'll take these, we'll unclick the matchups. And not, you know, again, they're all about the same tonight. There's not really any particularly scarce position. If I click that off, go back to the overall rating, I'm going to come down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. About down to Schroeder or Harris, and these guys are going to make my list. They're all overlap because they're all already on these positional lists. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the and one rating, and I'm going to look deep for value. I'm going to come underneath, say, $5,000. And now I'm going to see what numbers pop to the top. Now, granted, we get rid of the NA stuff. We're looking for big matchups in the and one. So there's Jeremy Grant, Etuan Moore, Ish Smith, DJ Augustine, Jordan Clarkson. There's Tristan Thompson again. It's indicating they're in good matchups. Now, I still need to see how projections pan out and whatever else. If I come over here to Ish Smith, and I see that he's projected value at 5.3 by our uh, you know, projections inside DFS Army, I'm very inclined to use him tonight. If I start hearing our other coaches, our more experienced coaches, start chirping, Ish Smith, Ish, boom, we'll just lock him in. Okay? I might come down and do the same thing to a Shelvin Mack, not lock him in necessarily, Mitchell Robinson, whatever. These are the names that I'm listening for. These are the super punts. I would love to see a bunch of them down here in the 3K range, you know, under four, four grand. But tonight felt a little bit more like a balanced night anyway. It didn't look like there were a ton of cheap guys that were out there and available. So if I'm going down to punt a couple of $4,000 guys, I might not be able to afford a Russell Westbrook. I might be building more of a balanced build. Each one more priced down on FanDuel. Tristan Thompson priced down on FanDuel. Again, these are just things I'm starting to look for today as our coaches filter in. So a little bit of NBA for you. NFL staff. Who's our staff? Football geek, CEO of the company. Big Marley does a lot of tiers stuff. Burns is a mathematician. There's me. I focus more on bankroll management and contest selection, things like that. The ladder up strategy is mine. But to be honest with you, I can help you with any of these sports. More of a jack of all trades, master of none. And I can usually tip you off to these guys. I know these guys well. I can recommend the right coach for you if you're into coaching. Uh, Puggle and I talked late last night quite a bit about another guy that he knows that's a friend that's going to come into the Army and needs some coaching. I told Puggle, I said, he's your friend. Why don't we open a three-way conversation where the two of us can help this guy? Puggle came to me, asked me to help his friend. I gladly accepted. I would help any one of you the exact same way, but you've got to come inside the DFS Army. You've got to ask for help. Donuts, great. MME strategy and actually an underrated coach. Uh, Josh up north, one of our better writers and is great with chalk donkeys, with pivots off of GPP stuff. Outstanding. Uh, PV Aaron is a contest master. Used to do a lot about kickers um, and has run out of time to really focus, new baby and everything, but he's also another great bone to pick. There is nobody better in the DFS Army than PV Aaron at the ladder strategy. I mean, outside of maybe me, the supposed creator of it, dude, he's just as good as I am. He's going to recommend, ask him, he's going to recommend absolutely everything that I would recommend the way you do it, word for word. Nobody knows the system better than PV Aaron when it comes to the latter. Um, Thunder Dan, we need to take him off there. Thunder Dan uh, obviously left for a different site, which is great. Good for him. He and I are still good friends. NBA staff, Boomer's Daddy, probably the best at uh, kicking off the pre-lock pivots that we have inside DFS Army. Uh, ben Jammin does our research station. CG does our research station, does our free squares article and stuff too. These guys are great resources. There's Puggle again. Are you noticing multi-sport athletes here? 
Uh, there's your Deion Sanders, right? Donuts again, Loosemeister, and Mr. Bear. These are two underrated coaches. Cash Keg is another one. Underrated coaches that we have inside NBA right now. NHL staff, if you're a hockey guy, Anthony's cash list is phenomenal. You got me again, multi-sport athlete, right? Uh, I also do baseball. But this type of stuff is what you're looking for. You're looking for our, our, our key guys. Uh, RK here does our research station. And Flynn does an awful lot of our writing. Flynn is very much like me, hybridized, does a lot of stacking, doesn't worry a lot about ownership and such. Um, Anthony does a lot of spreading out, does less stacking when it comes to cash, and really recommends a conservative style. So that's a little bit about our coaching, a little bit about what we do inside DFSArmy.com. Hopefully you need this coaching, you want this coaching, you see the value in investing in your own game. You run into the comments section, DFSArmy.com, use the coupon code CHOP for a 10% discount off of the prices that we run. You open up every single coach, every single sport. You're not paying a la carte. It's all inclusive. Once you're in, you're in. You get all of the videos. You get all of the all of the real-time coaching channels in our Slack forums, etc. You get all of that. It, there is no better value in all of DFS right now. There just is not. And it's going to continue to get better and better and better. And there's a reason why you see our Army helmets on the leaderboards. It's because we win, because we know what the hell we're doing. Now, remember, follow pin tweets. Retweet them. Get yourself eligible for that free month. I don't care if you're an existing member. I don't care if you're a brand new guy that's looking to try us out. Somebody's going to win it. It might as well be you. It can't be you if you don't retweet it. If you retweet the one this week, you're in there twice. If you retweet the uh, another one when I spot start, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever, and say, hey, retweet this for entry into the, the free drawing, boom. You can get in this thing four or five times and really slant the odds in your favor. I don't give a crap what you do. I'm going to help those that help me. It's that simple. You help me spread the word. You help me keep pushing the content. I will help you. I will make life easier on you. I'll coach you till I die. If you're already a member inside DFS Army. And I, I will occasionally spot you guys some comp subs. It's just what we do inside DFSArmy.com. Come inside, take a look at us, check us out. This is the early primer week 10, 30 minutes. I know it's a little bit long. Thank you for sticking out. Thank you for... Uh, following along and like and subscribe to the channel and let's keep this thing rolling. Follow that link, dfsarmy.com in the bottom and I will see you guys tomorrow when we start breaking down things in a little bit more depth. Peace out.